in the Lord's house this morning. I'm glad to be back here with you today. And uh, got a lot better weather today than we had last week. And we're thankful for that. And we're thankful that folks is getting over somewhat as best as we can with this cold and flu that's been going around. And been a lot of folks, it's even here today, that's been sick with that in the past few weeks. And we're thankful that you're back with us this morning. Turn with me, Jeremiah chapter number 1 this morning. Jeremiah chapter number 1. I love the Word of God. Jeremiah chapter number 1 today. Here in Jeremiah chapter 1, just give you a recap as you're turning there. God has commissioned his prophet to go. God's give him a hard message uh, that he's to deliver. And uh, Jeremiah is getting, as God's preparing him to take that message, God's strengthening him through his word. Let's begin reading here in verse number, uh, uh, let's begin reading here in verse number 5. It says, Before I formed thee in the belly, he said, I knew thee before thou camest forth out of the womb. I sanctified thee. I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Then said I, O oh Lord God, behold, cannot, I cannot speak, for I am a child. But the Lord said unto me, Say not that I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that, shall, that I shall send thee. And whatsoever I shall command thee, that thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand, and he touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. Mouth. See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out, to pull down, and to destroy, and to throw down, and to build, and to plant. And moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Jeremiah, what seest thou? And I said, I see a rod of an almond tree. Would you pray with us this morning? Heavenly Father, we thank you today for this privilege and opportunity to be back in your house. And I thank you, God, for these that's better, Lord, from this flu outbreak. And Lord, able to be here today. We ask you Lord to anoint us God once again. Father we can't do anything without you. I'm trusting in you this morning. God put in my faith forward in you. God just asking for the Holy Ghost to lead, to guide, to direct, to prepare hearts God even right now to receive this word. And we ask these things in Jesus name. Everybody said amen and amen. Thank you for honoring the word of God this morning. We could go in a lot of directions right here from this very single chapter in Jeremiah. Jeremiah at this time is not only preaching to Israel but to Judah, the nations. That's when they're referred to, both of them there. He has a message that God's placed in his heart. It's a message of correction. And God just pretty much tells him they're not going to receive it. But nevertheless, I want you to take it to him anyway. I begin reading this morning. I looked here in verse number 10. That's really where I want to take our text from this morning from verses 10 and 11. But he said, see, I've, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms. But right here's where my thought is. He said to root out, to pull down and to destroy and to throw down and to build and to the plant. I begin to think about that as God commanded Jeremiah. He said, there's some things that I want you to root out. There's some things that I want you to destroy. There's some things that I want you to pull down. I begin to think about that on a personal level. I begin to think as God began to deal with us early this morning about this. You realize something tonight, church, that we're today rather that we go, the, the Bible teaches us that Satan goes about like a roaring lion seeking whom that he may devour. And I want you to know something. I've said this 
this a lot and preached along the line of it. But Satan's working overtime in the lives of men and women around this globe. He is very much so coming again the family right now very harshly. I want you to know this morning, friends, Satan's out to destroy the family. He's out to destroy the home and the lives of those that are in there. God spoke to Jeremiah. He said, there's some things here that you're going to face, but I want you to get them out. I begin to think about God. How can we get things out? The Bible tells you and I that, 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 we're, that we're weak at best, but the Bible said this. He said, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God. Now, I want you to notice what I just said. He said, the weapons of our, that's speaking to the men and the women of God, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. So when I begin to rehearse that passage of scripture in my mind this morning, I thought, God, there isn't but one way to root out the problems that this life brings about. There isn't but one way to do it. It's not a carnal way, but it's a spiritual way. For the weapon of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God. That's the only way that they can be mighty is through the leading and the guiding of the Spirit of God. And when we allow God to do that, friend, God will work for you and I. I begin to look at that there when Jeremiah began to go in and to root out. How many of you know sometimes there's some things that you just got to get out of the way? How many of you know that tonight? Now I've seen people that said, oh, this person over here, they rose up. I'm going to get them out of the way. No, sir, you don't rise up again flesh and blood, but you allow God to work in situations in your life. Pray for that individual. If you've got somebody in your life giving you problems, I want you to get down and get earnest before God and say, God, this person here, they may be doing me wrong, they may be treating me wrong, but I want to love them, God, through you. I want to pray for them, God, in earnest, Lord, that you would touch them, that you would move in their life. I want you, Lord, to work in their life for them, friend. And when you begin to do that, God's going to bless you and bless them both. Amen. He told Jeremiah, he said, go in and root out the problem. I begin to think about things that we as men and women of God, if we're not careful in this day and age that we can allow to get into our personal lives some things that must be taken out from time to time. Friend, we can allow pride to get in there. We can allow envy to get in there. We can allow rebellion to get in there. We can allow lust to get in there. We can allow all of these things of the flesh to get into this life and they have to be taken out. Why? Because they are a restriction or a restraint to our spiritual walk with God. You say, preacher, I didn't intend for them to get in there. No, maybe not, but nonetheless you have allowed that or I have allowed that to happen in our life. And how do we get them out? First off, we go before God in a prayer meeting. Amen? And we get in tune with God. We begin to talk to God. And you say, well, I wouldn't dare tell God that I got that in my life. Guess what? God already knows that you got that in your life. These people said, I would never tell the Lord that I've got, I've got lust or I've got envy or I've got pride. And friend, he knows that. He knows the very thought and the intent of your heart. He knew it before you did, all right? But when you get earnest before God and say, God, I'm dealing with this and I can't handle it, but I want you to handle it for me. I believe with all of my heart, church, that God will begin to work when we get earnest before him and ask him to to help me in my problem. Yeah. Now right there is where a lot of people buck up. I'm not going to ask God to help me in my problem. I'm going to tell you something I learned a long time ago. If I don't ask him to help me along the way with my troubles, I'm not going to make it very far. I need him more than anything else. I need God more than breath in these lungs today. I need God more than life itself. Why? Because I'm not looking to the things of this life, but I'm looking what goes beyond the grave, what goes beyond this life, and it's a life eternally with him. Amen? So I need him more than anything else.
Amen. And he, Jeremiah said these things. There God spoke to Jeremiah and he said there's some things that's going to have to be rooted out. I'll begin over this morning as I begin to think about what God was speaking to our heart. And I thought of a story in Luke chapter 22, what Jesus said to Simon Peter. And he said, and the Lord said to Simon, he said, the Lord said, Simon, Simon. He said, Behold, Satan hath desired to have you. Now, I want you to notice that. This is Jesus Christ speaking here. And he's telling Peter, he said, Satan has desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But Jesus said, But I prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. And he said, And when thou art converted, he said, Strengthen thy brethren. I want you to know something this morning, friend. The enemy of your soul is not changed. That's the same devil that Peter faced. It's the same one that you and I get up and face every day. It's the same old problem. It might be a different way or a different angle, but it's the same old one behind it all. It's the enemy of our soul. But Jesus said to Peter, he told him there, he said, Simon, Simon, he said, Satan hath desired to sift you as wheat. I want you to know something this morning. I see the enemy of our soul sifting lives all around this globe. And I see people fall and pray to the enemy. But Jesus said, Peter, he said, but I have prayed for thee. I want you to know something, friend, this morning. You may be going through the sifting process. You may be going through the rubbing down the hard process of life. But there's one that's standing in your stead and his name is Jesus Christ still interceding to the Father, still taking your need to the Lord and interceding for you and I daily. Put your faith, put your trust in him. That's what he said to Peter. He said but I prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. What's this faith about? Jesus said I prayed for you Simon that your faith in me fail not. And he went on to say, he said, when, I, when thou art converted or when thou art put back where you need to be, he said, strengthen thy brethren. I want you to know something this morning, friend. You don't hear a lot about it anymore. We live at a time right now where there's a world of preaching that just says everything's all right. Go on, do it. If it feels good, do it. Live like you want to and just run here and there. But I'm going to tell you something, friend. There's some preaching that I grew up under and I believe that it still needs to ring forth from the pulpit today. There's a place of repentance. And when things get in our life that don't belong, don't sweep them under the rug, don't carry them off out there and lay them aside, repent pen of them. David said, he said to flee fornication. Do you know there was a reason for that? He's wanting to flee from it because he said, I don't want me around it. What was it? He didn't want to fall prey to that. That's what it was. That's the reason he run from it. Can I tell you something, friend? When we flee from something and we get away from it and we stay away from it, we'll not become a victim to it. Amen. I guarantee you somebody tell you to watch something over there. You're going to watch it with everything you got in you. But it's when we get slack, if we're not careful, that we lose attention as to what's going on. You see, there's things that can distract you when we get our mind off of what's going on. When maybe we just start, uh, just however, but we get our mind off of what's going on. If we're not very careful, we'll get let down, spiritually speaking. I was telling my cousin yesterday about an incident that happened to my dad a long time ago. I don't know, I was probably 18 at the time. And, and my dad was a board member at the school and they had asked him if he would come and help them do some welding up in the front of the building during the summertime. And him and the, and the mechanic with Pee Wee Carter at the time, they were out there, both of them were cutting pipe and welding a handrail around through by that building. And, and, and I don't remember if my dad cut it or, or, or Pee Wee, it doesn't really matter. But dad got to talking with Pee Wee about what they were fixing to do. And they'd cut these pipe and welded them at that time. And dad just turned around talking to him and just laid his hand right down on top of what he'd just welded. 
it just burned it to the core. I mean, just terrible burn. And I, I'd come up there to where they were and was talking with him. And he was showing me his hand and, and how bad it was burned and all of these things. And I said, Dad, how in the world did you do that? He said, he said son, I just turned around. And he said, I just forgot about what we'd done. I turned around talking there. Just laid my hand right down on top of that. You see, what happened was that he had, for, he, he had just lost focus of what he'd been doing just for a split second. And that burn occurred. Can I tell you something, friend? The enemy of your soul is working diligently to get your eyes off the things of God. We live at a time right now where the enemy is trying to take the word of God and turn it around and, and do all kinds of things with that and to deceive people in every way that he can. My friend, that's why it's important that you know what the word of God says. You say, well, preacher, they things in there I don't agree with. I'm going to tell you something. You get to that point, get on your knees and start praying. Say, God, just open my eyes to what's going on. Show me, Lord, what's happening. I want, you, I want to show you something here this morning, if I can. How did things get started? I can tell you how things get started when people get their eyes off of the truth, when men begin to put their trust in their own self. Listen to what it says here in Genesis chapter number three and verse number one. It said, now the serpent was more suitable than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, he said, yea, hath God said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. But he said of the fruit of the, but she said, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, now I want you to notice this right here. God has said, you shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. Eve knew what God said. Now I want you to notice that. And he said, and the serpent said unto the woman, you shall not surely die. For God doeth know that in the day that you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and you shall be as God's knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw, I want you to notice this, verse 6 verse, and, and, uh, verse six, first part of this and said when the woman saw that the tree was good what did the woman see the Bible said that she saw that the tree was good now I just read to you back up there in that previous verse or two prior to that God said don't be don't 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 get around don't have any part to do with that but when the woman saw she's now taken her eyes and has began to look at something I want you to know something friend they've been a lot of homes broken up because somebody's eye got to looking at something that it didn't need to be looking at good preaching brother Holt amen I can tell you when the woman's eye got on the thing that God said don't do, then she began to allow something to happen in her life that then the enemy came along and he's whispering in her ear. You can just picture this in day-to-day -day walk. And he said, well, he said for this, and the, the, he said that the tree is good and that it was pleasant to the eyes. Notice that. And he said in the tree to be des and it was a tree to be desired to make one wise. And the Bible said and she took of the fruit now I want you to notice this she took of the fruit thereof and did eat notice that she took of it and the Bible said she did eat Eve was deceived through deception of the enemy of our soul. The same serpent, the same devil, the same problem that you face day in and day out. The same one. She took of it and she did eat. But what happened first? She began to look after it. She began to lust after it. She began to, to look. David and Bathsheba, all the sin there, all started with a look. Can I tell you something, friend? God puts his finger on something. Don't turn a deaf ear to it. 
God says you get it out, you better start pulling weed. God says pull it down, you better pull it out. Because I'm going to tell you something. It will destroy you. It will destroy you. It will destroy your life. It will destroy your home. It will destroy your friend. And it's not by, and the Lord told, and Eve here was sin, but she sinned through deception. The enemy said, oh no, this thing's good. I've had people to tell me, stand flat footed brother Kenny, and tell me oh sin's good. It's okay. It's okay. And folks these people gets up on TV that sin, that the Bible declares that it's just as wrong as it can be. These people that get up and declare to millions, oh it's alright. It's alright. This is a new age. Can I tell you, my Bible didn't change just because there was a new year come around. My word didn't change because somebody didn't agree with it. If it's sin then, sin now. God said, Jeremiah, go in there and root some things out. I want you to know something. There comes some times in our life that we got to get some things out. Otherwise, it'll be a hindrance to us. Really? Preacher, will it be a hindrance to us? Got your Bible handy? Turn with me to Joshua. The book of Joshua. I want to read you a little bit of reading right here, and I want you to follow along with me. The book of Joshua this morning. Joshua chapter number 7. Can it really bring hindrance? We'll read it to you. In Joshua chapter 7 this morning. Let's begin reading here in verse number 10 of chapter 7. And it said, And the Lord said to Joshua, He said, Get thee up from where thou liest, for thou thus up on thy feet. And Israel has sinned, and they have also transgressed my covenant, which I have commanded them. For they have even taken of the accused thing, and they have also stolen and disassembled also, and they have put it even among their own stuff. Now I want you to notice that. It said, therefore the children of Israel, it said they could not stand before their enemies, but they turned their backs before their enemies, because they were accused, neither will I be with with you anymore except you destroy that accused from among you. And it says and he said among you, he said up and sanctify the people and say sanctify yourselves again tomorrow for thus saith the Lord God of Israel there is an accused thing in the midst of thee O Israel for thou canst not stand before thine enemies until you take away the accused thing from among you. In the morning therefore you shall be brought a according unto your tribes and it shall be that the tribes which the Lord hath taken shall come according unto the families thereof and the families which the Lord shall take shall come by household and the household which the Lord shall take shall come by man by man and it shall be that it is taken with the accused thing shall be burnt with fire he and all that he hath because he hath transgressed the covenant of the Lord and because he has wrought folly in Israel. And so said. Uh, so Joshua rose up early in the morning and he brought Israel and their tribes and the tribes of Judah was taken. And he brought the families of Judah and he took the families of, uh, of the Zerahites and he brought the families of the Zerahite man, man by man and, Z and Zebediah was taken. And it says and he brought his household man by man and Achan the son of of Carmi, the son of the of the Zebediah, man, there's some hard words here, and the son of Zariah of the tribe of Judah was taken. And it said, and Joshua said to Achan, he said, my son, give I pray thee glory to God for of Israel and to make confession unto him and tell me now what thou hast done and hide it not from me. And Achan answered Joshua and he said, indeed I have sinned against the Lord, God of Israel, and 
and thus and thus have I done. And when I saw among the spoil of the goodly Babylonian garments and the 200 shekels of silver and a wedge of gold and 50 shekel weight, he said, then I coveted them and I took them and behold, they are hidden the earth in the midst of my tent and the silver is under it. And Joshua sent messengers and ran into the tent and behold it was hid in the tent the silver under it and they took them out of the midst of the tent and they brought them unto Joshua and unto all of the children of Israel and they laid them out before the Lord and Joshua and all of Israel with him took Achan and Achan the son of Zariah and the silver and the garments and the wedges of gold the sons of his daughters and the oxen of his ass and the sheep of his tent and all that he had and they brought them unto the valley of Accor. Now can I tell you something that that sin cost him everything. That thing cost him everything because of the covetousness that was in his heart. No doubt that he thought that I've got this thing, I've got it covered up. It's laid over there in the tent. It'll never be known by all of Israel but they could not prosper because of the sin of this one man they could not prosper they could not go before their enemies and win and saint of God God began to deal with Joshua and Joshua said they sin in the camp there's something here and when he got down and began to look it's laying in Achan's tent oh my so I was praying this morning. God began to impress on me to ask the question, what's in the tent floor? What's in the tent floor? Can I tell you something? It'll hinder your relationship with God. It'll hinder your walk with Him. But God said, root it out. Root it out. I'm fixing to get in some fix. I'm coming to a close. I'm fixing to get on something that I'd really would rather just steer around and move on. But as I was praying this morning, God began to deal with me about it. Eve in the Garden of Eden began to look at the forbidden thing that God said don't partake of, don't be around, don't touch, and don't deal with. But she began to look. We live in an age right now when the sin of pornography is at an all-time high. If you're my age and backward, maybe even 15 or so odd years younger than I am, we grew up in an air. It was here, but it was not available, Brother Kenny, like it is right now. When I grew up as a young man, yes, it was available, but to ever purchase anything like that or to have a part of that, you had to go in there and ask for it. And that kept a lot of people from doing it because they wasn't wanting a part of that or to go in there to let somebody know that they were doing those sort of things. But now we live in an age where it's readily available at any moment's time across the internet and into the homes of millions but people have said well you know that's just that's just on TV I'm not God I don't care if that goes on listen to me somebody that stuff getting in your home will set up seed and that seed will grow a harvest you mark my word if it didn't root it out pulled out plucked out pulled up burnt and taken care of it'll set up house oh brother surely not I read it to you right here from the book of Joshua the sin of that covetousness look what it done for Joshua's life so I was praying this morning God began to deal with me about what I'm speaking to you about right now people allow things into their homes and into their lives that they may feel nobody knows anything about 
You don't know what I'm doing, preacher. How can you say that? You're right, I don't. Let me read you something. I don't know. But I can tell you there is one that does. I think I've got Psalms in this Bible. I did have earlier. Psalms 99. Psalms 90, I'm sorry. And verse 8. He says, For thou hast set our iniquities before thee, and our secret sins in the light of thy countenance. For all of our days are passed away in thy wrath, and we're spent our years as a tale that is told. Now over here in Psalms 44. In verse 21. It says, Shall not God search this out? For he knoweth the secrets of the heart. Yea, for thy sake are we killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. God knows the secrets of thine heart. Listen to what he said in Romans, the New Testament this morning. And I've got a whole list of things right here. God sees and God knows. and There's nothing hid from the Lord, friend. People can hide it from me. And for a while, they'll hide it from a great portion of their family. You're not hiding it from God. It says this in Romans 2 and 16. It says, destruct, I'm in 3 and 16. Let me back up to 2 and 16. For in the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according unto my gospel. God's going to judge what's there. But can I tell you this morning, homes is being destroyed for the very problem that I spoke about a moment ago. Because people are allowing that to come into their life. People are allowing that to build in their life. While I was praying, talking to God, God spoke something to my heart. There's somebody dealing with this problem sitting in this house this morning. But you are not the one that's doing it. It's the spouse. And you're struggling with that. And you're having a world of problems and it's causing havoc in your life. Preacher, somebody just got a hold of it. What do I do? What do I do? I told you when we started. The weapon of our warfare is not carnal. You can't buy you something off the shelf that's going to fix this. You can't take that person that you're deeply in love with and take them to a psychiatrist and then change their mind. You can't do that. But you can take them to prayer. Oh, I said you can take them to prayer. And guess what? Your insurance will cover that too. 100%. You can take them to prayer and you can say, God, I love this person with all of my heart. We have committed our lives together. I want to spend my life with the rest of my life with them. But there's things there, God, that's a stronghold in our life. And I want you, Lord, to deal with that. Oh, for the weapon of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God. I said they are mighty through God. The only way for deliverance is through the hand of God. Would you bow your heads with us this morning? Eyes is closed. Musicians, if you would this morning, if you can, please come help me. <coughs> My friends, this morning I have spoke to you what I very much feel that God spoke into my heart early this morning in prayer. And I'll be honest with you as I can be. I wrestled a little bit with that. But I said, God, nevertheless, not in my will, but thine be done. I can't do anything, Lord, without you. 
because I knew how personal this is going to be. I knew how hard maybe this is going to be even right now in this altar service where we're at. But I ask you this morning, what's just inside the tent door of your life? Man, if Achan could have had a redo and a makeover, I'm confident that he wouldn't have done what he'd done. But it was revealed. It was revealed. The Word of God says, Be assured your sins will find you out. You can rest assured. They can be found out and you can deal with them in an altar of repentance. Or they can be revealed like Achan was right out in front of everybody. ask you something this morning heads is bound across this building you may be sitting in this house and you're away from God you're not serving the Lord but you're desiring you're looking around you're seeing this thing coming to a close and it's doing that You want to make a change in your life. I want you to come this morning. We won't pray with you. We won't pray with you. Is there anybody in this house lost and undone without God? We want you to come. I want you to come. These preachers, we're going to gather in here. These folks, laity's going to gather in here. We're going to pray with you. Are there anybody anywhere? 